I'm back from a short house moving break, so it's time to tackle that backlog as game releases wait for no reviewer, or at least they wouldn't wait for me. First on my list is Injustice 2, released back at the beginning of May. It's been a number of years and two console generations since I last sunk my teeth into a good fighting game, Tekken 3, and my how far the genre has come. Back in those days, each character had only two skins, a main and an alt, for when the character had to fight themselves. Injustice 2 has a number of unlockable skins for each of its 30 characters, along with numerous armour collectibles offering both stat and further cosmetic changes. It also looks amazing, from the characters to the arenas, layout design to visuals, even the lip sync and facial animations are exceptional. I've never before seen a fighting game look so good. There's been a few grumbles about his dark and gritty storyline feeling a bit flat, but I do wonder if some of those people have forgotten that this is a fighting game, not normally a genre well known for having a deep engaging plot. Now, could DC's characters and universe have been used to create a more engaging in-game storyline? Undoubtedly yes, but so could recent movie releases. I personally think, considering the chosen structure of the story campaign, giving the player control of different characters each chapter to introduce a decent chunk of the cast, it does quite well in also presenting a coherent story, and I find the couple of hours spent playing this mode rather enjoyable. The story follows on from the previous game's events, but has a new villain and plotline. It deals with issues such as loss, betrayal, vengeance, and even domestic violence. Is this your idea of marriage counselling? Let's take this seriously. Fine. Loser does dishes. Yes, I know. Sad, isn't it, when a pile of dirty dishes leads to such marital violence. I guess there were no coins left in their house. Should plot not interest you, then Injustice 2 has numerous other modes, both single player, multiplayer, online and local, to keep you entertained. Ever you choose to play, your characters will collect experience, level and collect gear. However, this won't count in ranked matches. Ah, wait a minute, this is a fighting game, so really I should mention the fighting, shouldn't I? Well, the combo system is best described as expansive. What I loved about Tekken was the training mode, where all the available moves and combos for a character was displayed in a nice scroll down box. Well, you won't find that in Injustice 2, it has basic tutorials only. For everything else, you're on your own. Now that might seem a bit daunting for newcomers, but if you just stick to easy, you'll soon pick up a decent set of combos, just through trial and error. There's also a very entertaining array of super moves, unique to every character. Despite the scale and complexity of its combo system, with even the basic combos not being shared between characters, it's still easy enough to pick up, if difficult to master, perfect for the genre. Even the most die-hard fighting game enthusiasts will find plenty to sink their teeth into with hard modes and online tournaments. Not a fan of PvP? Then the multiverse mode is for you, with new events added monthly, weekly, even hourly, which results in an endless amount of single-player content. Without a doubt, in relation to previous fighting games I've played, admittedly dated now, this one stands head and shoulders and torso above. Now, there is a new Tekken 7 left for me to try, but that's a story for another day.